in life, there are always hills to climb, as WBC Super Welterweight Champion Terry Norris knows. Strong, quick, and flashy, he was a rising star when he got flattened in a try for the WBA title. But he bounced back to knock out John Mugabe for the WBC title, and since then he's handled the challenges of Sugar Ray Leonard, Donald Curry, and three others. He stands alone at the top of his division, looking at a bright and promising future, as today he prepares to take on the challenge of undefeated Carl Daniels on the Fruit of the Loom Professional Boxing Series. but we're indoors today inside the sports arena for a continuation of the Fruit of the Loom Professional Boxing Series. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dan Deardorff, and welcome to our third consecutive Saturday of boxing here on ABC Sports. Last night, there was a Michael Bolton concert inside the arena here. They've got rid of all that. They've set up the ring, and we're ready with a couple of live fights coming your way here this afternoon. With me again, as always, my partner, Alex Wallow. And Alex... Uh, a crowd of almost 6,000 people are going to be here this afternoon, and they're here to see terrible Terry Norris. And they'll have a chance to see one of boxing's young lions, Dan, a man who, as we saw at the top, has beaten three of the biggest names in boxing, John the Beast Mugabe, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Donald Curry, but he has not yet achieved a star quality of his own. He wants to win in very impressive fashion here today to keep himself in the running for the kind of mega bucks excuse me, Megabucks uh, big payday that he really feels he deserves. Yeah, and, and the way boxing is right now, that may be not right around the corner. First of all, we're going to begin with an eight-round junior lightweight bout. This is between Gabriel Orelas and Tommy Valdez. Alex, if you would, a bit about these two. Dan, the man to watch here, Ruelas, with an impressive 27-1 record. A big part of his story is that one loss, which ended in bizarre and controversial fashion, which we'll get into, but which also resulted in a career-threatening injury. He's come back to win the North American 130-pound title you see there, and he may be back on track to a shot at a world title. The opponent, Tommy Valdez, very well-traveled journeyman, only four wins in his last 12 fights with six KO losses. But believe it or not, he does have power, 26 KOs in his 32 wins, and when he gets in shape, he can be dangerous. Let's go ahead, check the tail of the tape here. You see Valdez is four years older than Reyes. Reyes, three pounds heavier, the 130 to 127. Other than that, not a whole lot of difference between these two. This is scheduled for eight rounds. Lou Moray is our referee, and here we go. In the junior lightweight division. Reyes in the white trunks. Wearing the black, we have Valdez. Gabriel Reyes made his name as a puncher. Very, very strong with the left hook to the head and to the body. And right now, Alex, these two leading off like they think this is a two-round fight. <laughs> Keep fighting like this, it will be. So much for the feeling out process. Both fighters on their toes leaning into one another and just wailing away. Good work to the body by Ruelas, and he may have Valdez a little bit hurt. Well, you saw the arms of Valdez just stop. Yeah, Tommy Hill. Oh, there was a good left right on the chin of Valdez. A sweeping left hook, and you could see that that stung Valdez. We talked at the top about, ooh, low blow there by Ruelas. We talked at the top about a career-threatening injury that Gabriel Ruelas in the white trunks on the right had. He was way ahead in a fight with Jeff Franklin when he had a an injury to his right arm, which Franklin then worsened by wrenching the arm, coming out of a clinch, and actually broke his right elbow, fractured it. He's had two very difficult operations. The second one done uh, by one of the noted orthopedic surgeons in the country, Dr. Tony Daly of Los Angeles, and it appears, I mean, obviously, that career is back on track whether Gabriel is able to use that right arm the same way he did before the injury may be the key to whether he's able to compete at the world-class level. And at ringside, you don't need me to tell you, that's Muhammad Ali. He and Ken Norton are here in San Diego celebrating, I guess it's been 19 years since the first of their three fights back in 
1973. And Alex, you had a chance to say hello to him. Boy, good work here by Ruelas, yeah. You'd think Ali would not want to come back to this arena. Yeah. This is where Kenny Norton broke his jaw. Ruelas is getting his left over the low right hand of Valdez. A reminder, everybody, the California state rules apply here in this fight. Scoring's on the 10-point must system. The standing eight is not in effect. Neither is the three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round, and the doctor does have the power to stop the fight here in California. Awful lot of punching here in round one. Both men, I think, a little bit taking a breather. Ruela still trying to do good work to the body. Has been low with a number of them. Well, I can guarantee, Alex, that Valdez is going to eat more and more of those lefts from Reyes if he keeps that right hand as low as it is. This is the end of the first round. It's been a good one. The fighters meet in the middle of the ring for the beginning of the second round here. This one's scheduled for eight. That's Gabe Reyes in the white trunks on the left of your screen. Tommy Valdez wearing the black. Reyes, a very promising junior lightweight. And his kid is a banger. His punches have some pop behind him. He's a terrific young man. I mean, he's been through an awful lot getting himself back into shape after just a horrible injury. Two out of the three screws that were put in his elbow after the injury broke. It had to go back in. Dr. Daly went back into the elbow, put Ooh. larger screws in, had a bone graft. More low blows there from Wayless. And the referee just not really doing anything about it. Again, Lou Moray is the referee, and that has been about the third or fourth. And another one by Reyes hits below the belt. And not even a not even the murmur of a warning from Moray. And, and those are draining, debilitating body punches. I mean, Gabriel gets tremendous leverage with the left hook to the body. And with that uppercut, you saw him try right there. Oh, and there's a, another uppercut by Valdez that scored, but it didn't have a lot on it. And Tommy Valdez right now is so conscious of the body blows, the ones that have been legit and the ones that haven't, that he's carrying his hands very low. Gabriel might come upstairs a few times right here, because I think Tommy is very conscious of the body shot. Well, he's been getting over the low right hand of Valdez in the first round, and you just saw he scored a couple more over that low right hand. And some good scoring punches there by Tommy oh. Valdez. We called him a well-traveled journeyman, which he is, but he's got a lot of heart. He fights very hard. He either knocks you out or he gets knocked out. Gabe Reyes actually went in at the age of 12 and begged Joe Goosen, his trainer, to let him begin to fight. His older brother Juan was already a fighter with the Goosen camp. You saw that uppercut score. Valdez attempting to fight back. And he and his brother, his younger brother, Rafael, both are very promising fighters and just good, good kids, hardworking kids, Alex. What a full booth fight. I mean, they just have, from the opening bell, just both planted their feet and let both hands go. One thing to watch for, Dan, is how much Gabriel uses that right arm. He doesn't have full extension on it yet, or uh, probably never will. And he's not using it a whole lot. Of course, he hasn't really had room to step up with it. They've been so close to each other. And nobody's been in the sweet spot yet. That that range where you get extension and can really put your body into a punch. This has been hand-to-hand -hand combat at close quarters. The end of the second. Welcome back to San Diego. Dan Deardorff along with Alex Wallow as we move into the third round here in this preliminary. An afternoon of boxing coming your way, so stay with us right here on ABC Sports. If you follow boxing on the West Coast, you've heard of the man with his back to you, Gabriel Ruelas. Outstanding prospect. Feigning there, he looks, uh, for the first time, the, the pace slows right here in the first 30 seconds of round three. Oh, a digging left hand into the body by Reyes, who has consistently worked the body of Valdez. Some of them appear to be definitely low. A reminder coming up, the WBC Super Welterweight title fight. Champion Terry Norris defends against undefeated Carl Daniels. Those two body blows were not low. He does an awful lot of good work there. I think it's up to the referee in this case, Dan, to, to warn him. I think Gabriel, if he gets warned, you know, will uh, abide by the warnings, but the referee just hasn't done it. Come on, come on. Come on, 
Definite slowing of the pace here in round three. It would be inhuman to think that they could keep up that pace. Tommy Valdez, instead of throwing there, clinched. I mean, he, he's let his hands go. He's responded every time with punches of his own. That time, he held on. I mentioned uh, the younger brother of Gabe Reales, that is Rafael, and there he is ringside, a very promising featherweight. He's nine months the junior of his older brother Gabe, and 29 and one as a featherweight, and a darn good talent as well, Alex. And, and somebody who knocked out Tommy Valdez, the opponent here, a year ago, January 91, in three rounds. So you can bet that Gabriel would like to get this guy out of here so his brother can't say that. I beat him easier than you did. Talk about sibling rivalry. Right. Now go back down. And, and Gabriel, believe me, wants to wants to get him out of there for his own mental, uh, in, you know, confidence. He wants to to prove to himself that he's got back the punching power prior to the injury. And and to be honest, right now we haven't seen the evidence of it. Tommy Valdez is a durable guy, but. We did point out that six out of his last 12 fights have ended in knockout losses, and Gabriel definitely does, wants to get him out of there inside the distance. Well, the distance in this particular fight is eighth, and we've just come to the end of the third. Into the fourth round we go. On the right, Tommy Valdez in the black trunks. He now moves to the left. Gabe Reales on the right, wearing the white. Valdez, by the way, is from Guadabampo, Mexico, and last week when we were in phoenix we wait a minute you can ask a trivia question no, I, well, it, it would be a real trivia question if you were with us last week we saw michael carbajal fight marcos pacheco that was pacheco's hometown what a bumpo that would have been a heck of a trivia question again what a bumpo chamber of commerce those are the, those are the, those are the, yeah well, i'm going there for a vacation later this week again in close in close, Relas and Valdez. We mentioned that Ali was here in San Diego, and that's because they're celebrating his fight with that man, Ken Norton. And we have to say, Ken Norton Sr. with the success of his son, the linebacker with the Dallas Cowboys, and a couple of great ones there, Alex. If Muhammad Ali was the greatest, then what was Ken Norton? Ken Norton beat Ali the first fight, broke his jaw right here in this arena. A lot of people think he won the second fight, although I thought Ali with a 12th round rally just barely edged it. And almost everybody you talked to thinks Kenny Norton won the third fight in Yankee Stadium. Well, you talk about two evenly matched fighters. Correct me if I'm wrong, but neither one of them knocked each other down in those three fights. I mean, they were decisions, all three of them. I mean, you talk about two guys whose styles really matched up for a great fight. And, and this fights, I believe, which were all decided on the on the final round. We're being unfair here with our reminiscence oh. to this fight because you got two kids. Ali and Norton yeah. deserve it. Right. Two kids here working their brains out here. I mean, just throwing punches. Gabriel Ruelas on the left. We're going to butcher his name about three times because I always thought it was Ruelas, but it's yeah. Ruelas. Well, actually, it's it's terrible. Anyway. He, said, he says more like Ruelas. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't have choice. Gabe. Gabe. GR. <laughs> you see him there, you might have just heard Joe Goose in his corner say, Gabe, don't wait. He was standing there in punching range and not letting his hands go. That's Reyes on the left, wearing the white trunks. Joe told him in his corner that you have to be busy. Inside, be busy. Outside, be busy. And to this point, Alex, I think your assessment of Valdez is right on. I mean, he is... Not just a walkover type opponent. This kid, uh, he's here fighting. Remember something else about Tommy Valdez. He really fights best at a weight division below this. This is not his best weight division. He's really a featherweight. So this is just an outstanding performance by him. Reyes weighed in at the 130 pound limit for this fight. Valdez came in at 127. So he's here three pounds light. If it goes the distance, we're halfway there. There's the bell for the beginning of the fifth round here in San Diego, California. Tommy Valdez and Gabe Reyes. Busy. 
This fight is scheduled for eight, and we move into five, and it's been a solid performance by Gabe Reyes, and he is a fighter whose punches clearly have impact. A good illustration there, that, that left, he just dug into the ribs of Valdez. But Tommy Valdez has stood up. Uh, I mean, a tremendous performance against a guy who lives and dies with his punching power. I think Gabriel has to be a little bit distressed that his punches on a man that's been knocked out a number of times recently has not even appeared stunned by some of the bombs that he's landed. And bombs to the body. I mean, that's the... Uh those have been the hardest punches of the fight so far, Alex, and you're right. They don't seem to have really taken a toll on Valdez. Let's go. I, I'm surprised. I'm as surprised as Reyes is. Don't forget, one of the reasons we're here in San Diego is this title fight. A super welterweight fight in the WBC between Terry Norris and Carl Daniels. Now, Gabriel's on the outside, and watch to see if he throws that right hand to the head. Remember, that's the right hand that he fractured the elbow, took 13 and a half months off, has had seven fights in his comeback, but he really does not let that right hand go to the head. There, he tried one, and it got blocked by Valdez, I believe. Valdez acted like it hurt him, but he picked it off with his glove. We should point out one other thing, Dan. Both these men are used to going 10 and 12 rounds. These are main event fighters. Fighters have been in with main event. And, and uh, for them to be fighting an eight-round fight means that they're able to put, you know, pick up the pace and give you the kind of tremendous pace that they are here. Reyes with Valdez up against the ropes. Leaning on him, trying to keep him from getting out. Tommy is not totally in a defensive posture yet, not totally in the survival mode yet. As you see there, pushing away, trying to get some punching room. But he is not as active as he was early. Ooh, Valdez connected with an uppercut there. And that's one of the problems when you lean in the way Reyes is leaning in now. You are susceptible to an uppercut. You raise another good point, Dan. Gabriel Reyes has a tremendous uppercut of his own. I don't think he's used it enough in these exchanges on the inside. Get on the outside a little bit. Valdez has been on the ropes here for the better part of a minute. Reyes is working to get inside. He's not connecting with much. We return to San Diego. We're moving into the sixth round here. This one is scheduled for eight. It's a junior lightweight bout between Tommy Valdez and Gabe Reyes. Reyes on the right here in the white trunks. Valdez is wearing the black with the stars and the tassels on the side. Lou Murray is the referee. You heard his warning about getting your distance. But this fight is right back where it ended last round with Valdez up against the ropes. Get back out with that jab, Dave. Get back out there. And Reyes is so close that and Joe Goosen. Just not landing anything with real oomph to it, Alex. Get out of there. Get out of there. There you go. See, here's Joe Goosen, the trainer in the corner. Get out there with a jab. Get out. No, no, he wants him to get a little bit of distance. He wants him to get out and jab his way in and then follow it up with something. And there, but that's a half-hearted attempt at a jab. Go back in there. Just like that, man. You just wonder, as, as you see Gabe trying that combination, whether he doesn't want to jab too much because then your impulse is to cross it with the right, and I'm not sure he wants to throw that right hand. He doesn't have to throw it here. He's winning this fight, won every round on our scorecards. And maybe he's just reluctant to use the right if he does not have to. Reyes, of course, a member of that 10 Goose boxing team, the former home of ex-champion Michael Nunn, who was knocked out and stripped of his title by James Tony. We want to remind our local ABC stations that at the end of this round, we will be taking a station break. Oh, and there was a good punch again by Reyes. Again, low blows. And you see Tommy Valdez bending over. Oh. Attempt, I mean, they're not all low, Dan. A lot of them were, I mean, they're a couple, but a lot of them were just tremendous body punches. Well, he hit one out of that last series. Only one was low. There is Joe Goosen in Reyes' corner. The TVKO uh, color go. analyst on their telecast. And at uh, a and crossover back, artist. Right, back in his original role here where he started, which is which is training fighters, doing a good Come job on, of it. Go. Oh, oh. Go. Grab yourself, Gabe. 
<laughs> he is a powerful puncher, and it's remarkable that we just haven't seen Valdez show more of the effects, Alex. I'm surprised. The question always is, is this mean that Gabe doesn't have the power anymore or that Tommy is just a tremendously durable guy who came in here in shape and determined to put, you know, to, to fight back with everything he has. And it's probably, as it generally is, a little bit of both. Oh, and there's a good right hand by Valdez that actually caught Reyes. Back Gabe out for a second. We're coming to the end of the sixth round and we'll return with more Fruit of the Loom professional boxing after a word from our ABC station. Oh. You can see the shorts of Gabe Reyes are, the left leg is, is covered with blood. He looked like he spit out blood, Alex, during the, uh, during the break between rounds. Uh, I think his nose is bleeding some from the nostril out onto the lip, but I think it's also draining down and into his throat. And you see that Tommy Valdez sees that also. Tommy yeah. just got energized by the fact that he'd done some yeah. damage. And he's going after Gabe. Gabe, I think the nose is, is, is uh, the blood's coming out of the nose. Whenever you see blood out of the nose, it's possible that it's broken. There was a good uppercut by Reyes, but... It followed a couple good right hands by Valdez on counter punches. Reyes pawing a bit at that nose. And for the first time, you're right, it is now Gabe Reyes who is in somewhat of a defensive posture. Oh! A great right hand by Reyes after setting up Valdez by holding out that straight left. For the first time in the fight, Gabe was had his back to the ropes. Tommy got careless, came in, and he paid for it. Whoa. And let's see how the right hand reacts. Let's see if Gabe did any damage to it, that punch that was right on the button. Apparently not, because he let it go again to the head. And again, slapped with it the, the, the last time. And uses it again. So maybe a confidence builder for Gabe Reyes to, to, to land that hard a punch. You see him coming out a little bit here. Well, this is Reyes' seventh fight since the surgery. He first fought in June of last year, so he's fought seven times in about nine months. Oh, another good uppercut that time by Valdez. And uppercuts are punches that a lot of times do damage to the nose. What a gutty kid, I mean, both of them, really. Well, for the first time in the fight, Alex, the two are getting a little separation. They've been in extremely close proximity up to this point. Oh, a good left-right combination by Reyes. But Gabe slapped with the right. He landed it, but he slapped with it. Didn't turn it over. Uh, I just wanted to finish the point about these two guys. They've just thrown punches, taken punches. Tommy has stood up to the body punches. Tommy Valdez in the left. And a lot of headshots, too, like you just saw. Gabe Reyes is... Thrown tons of punches, gotten hit back, got a nose injury, low blow again. Oh, another, another digging left hand by Reyes that was obviously low. Referee did warn that time. Oh, and now the fighters are letting them go. Neither one right now appears to be hurt at all. What a fight. What a fight is right. We have the final round coming up. There is the WBC Super Welterweight Champion Terry Norris in his dressing room getting ready to defend his title against undefeated Carl Daniels. That coming up immediately on the conclusion of this fight. That moving now into the eighth and final round. Rayless makes his way out. His shorts are just Severely stained with blood, and the crowd has been delighted with the action they've seen through the first seven rounds of this one. On our scorecards, Gabriel Willis obviously firmly in control of the fight. Still trying to close the show. Again, a reminder, this is the eighth and final round of this fight. Oh! Gabe, look, I mean, just got a second win here. He knows he's only got one round to go. As we said, he's used to going 12. 
And he made uh, Tommy Valdez do his impression of the alley shuffle there for a minute. Yeah, the alley buckle. The knees really gave way on Valdez. He staggered back. And Gabe did not jump on him like he might have when he saw that happen. Might have been a little bit too sportsmanlike there. I, I, I shouldn't imply, you know, that he jumping on him would have been unsportsmanlike. I think that's what he should have done. That was not the not the time to show chivalry, was it? Yeah. Reyes on your left there, Valdez on the right. Gabe came out very fast. Obviously, he's punched himself out a little bit. Tommy's forcing the action right now. Back and Gabe up onto the ropes. Well, for the second week in a row, Alex, we've seen real good preliminaries. Yeah, for the second week in a row, the main event has a tough act to follow. Two young men who gave everything. Another good combination by Gabe Reyes. We're getting ready to move into the final minute here in the final round of this eight-rounder. You see Gabe Reyes... Uh, at times carrying his left low, it may be that he's looking, not now, but at times he carries the left low, perhaps trying to draw a right hand lead from Tommy that he can counter with his left. Get away from him working the outside. In closing seconds of the fight, we should give a little bit of a report card, Dan. I think Gabe, who is the man with the future in this matchup, the guy on the right, has passed the test in terms of demonstrating that his his right hand, he's not afraid to throw it, he can land it and not sustain any further injury. I, as, as he has proved, I think, in the seven fights of his comeback. He's also shown the qualities he had prior to his injury, the fractured right elbow of, of guts and determination and heart that lead a lot of people to think that he can be a man who can fight, perhaps win a world title. The other side of the coin is that he's in with a fighter who has been knocked out a number of times and who has lasted the distance here today. And the distance is upon us. We'll be back here for the decision and then get ready for Terry Norris and Carl Daniels. We are back at the sports arena. Let's go up to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. 74, Pat Russell scores about 80 to 72. All three judges in favor of the winner, Gabriel Ruela. Terry Norris, who today defends against the number four challenger, Carl Daniels. All right, back here at ringside, Alex, uh, we don't have long to get set up for this fight. We've seen Norris several times before, a talented, talented fighter. You know, he's got tremendous natural athletic talent, but the thing that impresses me about Terry is how he came back from the Mugabe loss. He pulled himself together out of a, after a devastating loss, to, and, and, and mentally came back